Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my guest, Kazia Luckett. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their paths, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I've also created a transformational journey to help you further on your life, but also a journey through the lifetimes. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic reiki, guided meditation, hypnosis, angel oracle cards to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of a journey, a mini guided meditation, or angel card, oracle reading, with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Kasia Luckett. I'll be sharing why when the shit hits the fan, it's time to take a nap. Now, Kazia Luckett is a positive psychologist, three times international best-selling author of the Pay It Forward series, Notes to My Younger Selves, Volumes 1, 2 and 3, and founder of the Women of Contribution movement. Kazia is a pioneer behind two revolutionary new modalities called Mind Conditioning Therapy and the Energy Code, combining positive psychology, quantum physics, heart math and energy work. Her transformational results orientated approach has seen her work with a variety of clients, including celebrities, lawyers, CEOs, influencers, entrepreneurs, sports people, business owners, philanthropists, and socialites, shifting their limiting beliefs, fears, or barriers that restrict them from reaching the optimum levels of, of success, wealth, and happiness they desire. Now, Kazia has appeared on Medium, Entrepreneur, Top Sante Health Magazine, Thrive Global, The Awakening Giants docu-series, Good Housekeeping, BBC Radio and UK Health Radio. She is a member of the Association of Transformational Leaders of Europe. And she also lives in the UK, enjoys travelling with her husband and two children. So without further delay, hello Kazia and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? Oh, I am absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Ray, for inviting me on. Oh, you're welcome. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Kazir and I want to be part of this uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. So please do not be shy. So Kazir, why don't you tell us more about yourself and why when the shit hits the fan, it's time to take a nap? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will, I will. And thank you so much for asking. It must seem like a really strange thing to say when the shit hits the fan, we need to take a nap. But um, historically, women don't. They just keep going. They keep going until they're absolutely exhausted and burnt out. And my journey really has been one of those. Um, I was in corporate for a very long time and then I set up my own business, uh, a female concierge business helping busy corporate women juggle the work-life balance because let's be honest we go to work but we're also still expected to take care of the house, take care of the washing and the ironing and the food shopping and the kids and all of those wonderful things and so I had a team of 35 women that would go into women's houses and they'd do the the dinner prep or pick up kids from after school club or do the washing or the ironing or the bed changing or unloading and loading the dishwasher all those bits that really we don't want to be doing when we no. just walked in through the door and um each and every day i was seeing these phenomenally gifted beautiful women doing this juggling act and finding that the lie that we'd kind of been told, which is that we could have it all back in the 50s when women moved kind of from the home out into the workplace, we could have it all, was actually the reality. We were doing it all and people were burning out in doing it all. They weren't in alignment with who they were, how they should be living their lives. And interestingly, I was seeing time and time again, these beautiful clients suffering with things like depression, anxiety, um, you know, being signed off for work with stress. 
And it really kind of started my brain going. And then to top it off, I was working every hour that God sends. And I remember one day going to speak with my coach um, up in London. And uh, she came around behind me and she put her hands on my shoulders. And I remember looking up and she goes, I don't believe your business is making you happy. And I remember these words spilling out my mouth as I was going, no, 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 I love it, I love it, it's great, blah, blah. Got on the train on the journey home, words going over and over. I walked in through the door and there was the family. And I, I remember sitting down beside my, my son who I'd set up the business for in the first place. And he must have been maybe four, four years old. And my husband said, how did it go? And I said, oh, she says, my business isn't making me happy. And with that, my little boy said, mommy, you're always so grumpy. Oh. And it hit me. Well, that was kind of my reaction. It hit me as, you know, my eyes started to well up that, oh, my God, he's right. I am always so grumpy. I have become one of the women that I set my business up to help. And within... Within a month, I'd closed the business down. I had placed all of my members of staff with the families that they were working for. And I walked away and kind of dealt with my own burnout, overwhelm, and it pure exhaustion. And I suppose I stayed in that space for quite some time. And like many of us, when you go through those feelings, whether it's depression, overwhelm, anxiety, you know, anxiety, um, pure exhaustion. I mean, you know, I, I ended up with pneumonia for six weeks and even still through my pneumonia, you know, the universe was trying to tell me I was still like, no, I just work from bed. No, no, no. We get warning signs and we don't. Yeah. Listen. And then, um, in on Boxing Day 2016, my life changed absolutely forever in just one one simple walk. I woke up Boxing Day needing to clear my head, as many of us do after Christmas. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've been there, done that, and went for a walk. And within five minutes of going for a walk, um, started to hear voices, started to see pictures, started to hear questions. And I'd heard them before, but I'd ignored them. But this time they were, in, you know, insistent. And one of the main questions were, if you could go back, back in time to any pivotal moment in your life and give yourself words of advice, what would you give and would it change anything? And so literally I hurried home, sat in front of the computer, started typing away, fingers had a mind of their own. And at the end of the, the hour of typing, women of contribution, the concept that absolutely every woman on this planet can leave an impactful footprint just by being themselves was born. And also the Pay It Forward series, Notes to My Younger Self book. That's absolutely brilliant, you know, and then that's the thing we don't um, quite often realise that when we are run down, burnt out, um, fearful, um, depressed, whatever, our immune system just completely go down and we pick up every, every illness, um, every emotion of everyone else that pulls on top and makes us feel even more down. And, that, and and we do think, oh well, I'll just plow through it. I'll just keep going. Um, it'll it'll be fine. You know, I've I've got I've got the kids to look after. I've got this. I've got I've got that. Without thinking, okay, if I don't get myself better, then I'm not going to be any good in the long run. No, and and that is so true. You know, we as women, I think we know how how to give, but we don't necessarily know how to receive and give to ourselves. And you know, th this kind of um, vision started a journey of discovery. Within a very short period of time, I was doing my masters in positive psychology. Um, I was working with clients um, that, you know, had gone through what I had gone through. Um, I had attracted um, women from this, the hit film, The Secret, to be part of the book, which had been part of my journey. Yeah. And um, from that, you know, I started working one-on-one -on -one with clients and, and realized that actually there is a secret code that so many women have forgotten it's been lost through the generations the way that we treat ourselves is normally the way that we've seen our parents or our grandmother or those influential figures around us treat themselves 
So, you know, my mum, for example, and my grandmother, they multitasking was their thing. I mean, you know, they wore that badge with pride, even though the pin was like gouging their skin behind. And I think many women understand what that feels like. They they ran the business, you know, ran ran the, the home in the way that, you know, people run businesses. Yeah. It was literally everything. I mean, military precision. They worked double jobs. They 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 did all these phenomenal things, but they never stopped. In actual fact, they didn't know how to stop. Yeah. And this is where the energy code um, has really come from. It's just like, do you know what? There is a code that we all have that was planted in us before we were even born on how life should be. And so tapping into four different feminine energy spaces and now help women to discover their own unique energy code and how they can make it work for them so that they can push in those moments of time that need to be pushed, pull back in those moments of time that they need to rest. And actually by doing that, can increase their business revenue, can have the relationship of their dreams, can live a life that feels fully aligned with who they are. Oh, that's brilliant. So, so what are those, those, those four areas? So interestingly enough, when we first start um, looking at the energy code, we tend to be operating from a space of heritage patterns. So yeah. what's been passed down the generation. So if your mum was a multitasking genius, the chances are, unless you've actively chosen to do something different, you too will be a multitasking genius. So when we first start working with the energy um, spaces, there are four nurture and nurture is really about survival it's about being in survival mode um you know the name is a little bit um misleading you know it sounds lovely and cuddly but actually when people are in the nurture energy space they're gripping onto the wall for dear life you know or their their nose is just above the water and they 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 they're, they're gasping for breath nurture is all about stopping literally stopping and for people that are finding that life isn't going to plan stopping seems counterintuitive it feels like you should just keep you know should burst through the resistance you must keep going you must keep doing but stop is what's needed in the nurture space and i will tell you that um when i first started working with clients on this my clients could be in the nurture energy space for two months or more. Wow. That's how exhausted people are. This is what an epidemic looks like of women that are putting on the smile and they're going out and they're putting the mask on of everything is absolutely fine, but behind the scenes, they're barely keeping it together. And that's not because they're not gifted or they're not able to manage their time. They've been taught that they need to just keep going rather than stopping. So that's the first energy space. When you've started to master how to give to yourself and how to stop, you tend to then um, start to create your own energy code. And this is your natural you know, uh, ups and downs. And for some women, this follows the natural pattern of our feminine cycle. For those that don't have it, oftentimes they see it going in the cycles of the moon. Because let's be honest, we're 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 led by the moon. Whether you okay. believe it or not, ladies, we are led by the moon. Yep. Um, so we go through this natural cycle, and when we do that, we move into the three other different energy spaces. One is whisper. Whisper is about when you've been in the busyness of your head and you've gone. I know I need to stop. My body's telling me I need to stop. And you accept that that needs to be done, but then you give yourself permission to do it. And when you do so, you move out of your head, back into your body, out of the doing, back into the being, and you can breathe. And it feels gorgeous. And in the whisper energy space, you can read a book for two hours and not feel like you're being lazy. You can watch reruns of Netflix and not feel that you're procrastinating. You can go for a walk and say to the family, do you know what, mommy just needs some time just for an hour for herself without the guilt and shame. 
And so the whisper energy space is all about that supportive vessel to, to, to top up our energy bucket because it's either full to overflowing or it's depleted. The next one is create, because when we come out of our head, we allow the universe to give us the ideas, to allow that information to flood through, kind of like my walk on on Boxing Day. I wasn't in my head. I was just looking at the scenery. I was, it was pouring with rain, actually. I was just kind of marching on through the rain. But we allow those ideas to come in. And from the create energy space, that's where the magic and the realms of possibilities lie. That's where we know who to, to join forces with in business and the right opportunities at the right time with the right people. This is where those ideas spark and we go, oh my gosh, we wake up at three o'clock in the morning because we're like the universe has spoken to us. It has the space to speak to us at that point. And then last but not least is shine. And shine is all about inspiring those around by being the example that we wish to see, but also shining our light out, being in flow, doing what we love, but also shining light on other people. From that space, there is no lack. From that space, there is no competition. From that space, we're just living the best version of who we are and absolutely adore every minute of it. Wow. So, so it's so you, you know it, it sounds it sounds really it sounds easy when you say it, <laughs> but, but is it actually easy to do? The hardest hurdle for everybody that I've ever worked with, and I've worked with millionaires, I've worked with people that are just trying to bring in their first hundred pounds. You know, the, the the hardest thing that we, I think specifically as women, and there will be men that might be listening to this and and they'll be like, oh yeah, I want some of this. You know, some of the energies are feminine, some of them are masculine. Yeah. So whisper and, and, and nurture are feminine and create and shine tend to be quite masculine doing energies. Um, this applies to both men and women. Um, but stopping is the hardest bit when you're in the nurture space and every day you're doing that quiz and it's coming up and it's saying, yep, you're still in the nurture space and you're just going like, when am I going to move out of it? When you start to give to yourself and we don't know, we're so used to giving to others, we've forgotten what it truly means to give to ourselves, what it truly means to top up our own energy bucket until it's got to the point of overflowing and from that space we can give to others and it's got to the stage now where my son will go do you know what mum I need a nurture day today I need a day doing what I need to do and I quite often take him off school he knows his own body he knows what he needs and we need to do the same it's not unusual for my clients to to phone up and say do you know what I'm in a nurture energy space I need to stop or I'm in a whisper energy space. I need to stop. Can we delay what it is that we're doing? And when you start to track it, you know roughly when you're going to be in those spaces. So you can then fix your diaries. So if you know you're in a shine space, that's the time to be on stage. That's the time to have conversations. That's the time to do things like this. Other times it's time to hibernate. And especially as we're coming into the winter season. Mm -hmm. It's about pulling our energy back in to be able to have it available for us to do the things we want. And so many are our energy split, whether it's Facebook groups or beeps and alarms on our phones and our watches. We're just like split energy left, right and center. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something I, 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 I've, I've learned over the years is I will literally take time just to read to read a book so you know I've come back from a weekend where I was running a retreat uh, down in Glastonbury so I was full on the whole um, week then Monday um, I was still kind of like in that bit of energy so hangover. I yeah uh, yeah <laughs> that energy um, hangover yeah but then yesterday I I said okay I've got uh, um, some business stuff to do so mm-hmm. I did that till um, about four o'clock and then said right that's it for the day now no phones, no no business. I'm now just going to take time for myself, shower, dinner, and then just read. Yeah. 
And do you know, I think it's really important what you've said there. And obviously you're, you've harnessed your, your own energy code is that oftentimes we will have things going on in our lives that, that take a lot of our energy. You know, if you think of our energy bucket, you know, if, if you go to an event or you're holding the space for somebody, or if you're a therapist and you're, you're doing your work, you can quickly find your energy going down. And, and what I always say is, if that's the case, then you preload your energy before and you reload your energy afterwards. So like you said, you came back from Glastonbury and now you know, because you've been holding the space, because you've been you know, the vessel for other people's shifts and change, that you need to top that bucket up. And when you felt okay, then it was a case of, right, I'm ready to get back to it. And once we understand that natural ebb and flow, we should get into a space where, unless something dramatic happens, so, you know, I've had clients who, family members have died, and they've actively put themselves into nurture. They've said, do you know what? Right now I need to hibernate. Right now I need time for myself you should essentially just be going through the motions of whisper, create and shine in a beautiful way that actually works for you and is fully aligned with who you are and how you wish to live your life. Because I think so many of us are living our lives without intentional and conscious focus. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes um, a, a lot of sense because we, we just tend to go through our daily life doing the same things over again, maybe doing a little different here without actually really thinking about what we're doing or where we're going. Yeah, and interestingly, I heard, I think it was Joe Dispenza the other day who said that for most people, they can literally pick up their year. So 2019, for example, obviously 2020, slightly unique. Yeah. But but for most, they can kind of pick up 2019, lift it up and put it down in the following year. And they will follow exactly the same pattern because they're not consciously and intentionally deciding how to live their life in a way that works for them. And we do. I mean, there's so many things that we do that is so unconscious, you know, from the way that we brush our teeth to the way that we start with our head and work down to our feet in the shower. You know, we are on Groundhog Day, many of us on repeat. We go to jobs that we don't like. We we live with partners, you know, that yeah. we're not having t- intentional, conscious conversations with. You know, we're, we're in stress situations that we feel that we can't get out of. You know, so many highly successful people get to this point and they go, I've reached the pinnacle of where I thought my happiness would lie. And it's still not here. And in actual fact, I now feel trapped because... And paying out for the school fees and the big mortgage and those types of things. We've forgotten, I think, how to consciously and intentionally live our lives. Yeah. And I suppose also as well, um, you know, you, you're talking about, um, you know, we, we get to the, we get to that peak or whatever and we're continually paying the bills, etc. The knock on effect is on the family as well, isn't it? Because you kind of like the you're you're not there in the space to for your family really are you no your your energy's frenetic i mean you know i think back to those those times and and i will say i still fall into the trap and every so often i have to rein myself back in and think quite consciously what are you doing here where the children come in from school and they're like yes we want to see you and obviously mine are teens now so you know that that time of what well, yes we want to see you is going to be quite limited so yeah most of it and I'm so engrossed in what I'm doing that I go oh yeah yeah lovely to see you. I'll be out in a minute and then before you know it an hour's passed because you, you you're so consumed in what you're doing it has a knock-on effect because they're going to be thinking well obviously I'm not that important they're also going to be thinking that, you know, life is just obsessed with doing the work that we do and, you know, doing the actions that we do. I think it's about being the example that we want our children to embody as they move forward. Because I don't want my children to go through burnout. I don't. I don't want them to experience that in any way, shape or form. No. 
no and and we and we do follow our patterns of, of what we see our parents our peers do even if we're not consciously doing it subconsciously um we we do tend to to follow that so i suppose it could be you know that if if you are busy working that um you you kind of like arrange it so that at least for an hour two hours when your children come home from school you're just dedicated that hour to them and then you can go back and do whatever yeah. you're supposed to be doing yeah I, I mean i i have now got a freedom friday so freedom friday is all about me it's all about topping up my bucket now obviously there are some days that i just think oh do you know what i need a bit of a top up now but freedom friday is what do i need before the weekend where i'm going to spend time with my family to make sure that I'm in an overflowing state, to make sure that I can give myself and my whole self, not distract, you know, distracted to my family. And that that is a real gift that we can give. And it's really interesting because we um we last year we came back from living in Barcelona. We'd been lived over there for, for two years and um the way that they do things, I learned so much, you know, also when the shit hits the fan, take a nap, you know, it's a great emotional reset button. And actually, I now become a master that as I'm going along, if I suddenly feel tired, it's like, right, 10 minutes, it emotionally resets me, it fills up my bucket, I'm ready to do what I need to do. And I think, I think British um, culture has cultivated this work hard, work long, you know, push through the resistance. And we can learn a lot from our, our European counterparts. Yeah. You know, and, and even if you're really like a busy, busy executive or something, you need to use the bathroom at some point. Go and use that 10 minutes, sit on the toilet and just close your eyes. Exactly. Plug yourself in, listen to a five minute meditation. You know, there are so many things that we can do. And, you know, I, I'm not a smoker, but I know in the corporate world, many people take smoking breaks two or three times a day. Use that opportunity to also go and plug yourself in, go and take a quick walk in the fresh air, you know, and, and, and give to yourself. You're entitled to it. I, I mean, I, I used to literally working for myself and for others, I'd get to the end of the day and I'd think, I haven't peed. I haven't peed all day. I haven't drunk any water. I haven't, I, have I Have I eaten? You know, how, how can we be that disrespectful to our bodies? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And when we do it, so, and we do it unconsciously without really, because it's what we've seen and what's been expected of us. Yeah. Yeah, it has been expected of us. And it's really funny because when I was doing my um, positive psychology master's, um, I was reading a book uh, by a gentleman called Daniel Levinson. And Levinson wrote two books, uh, The Seasons of a Man's Life and The Seasons of a Woman's Life. Unfortunately, in The Seasons for a Woman's Life, he died halfway through. So his wife took on that role. Uh, the universe obviously knew what it was doing yeah. at that moment in time. But one of the things that he talked about, um, which I kind of touched upon, is this myth of the successful career woman. The myth that we can have it all. And the reality has been that we have done it all. And then we fall into that kind of victim martyrhood where it's just like, it's fine. I can... You know, our husbands will say, can I help with anything? You'll go, no, 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 it's yeah. fine. I've got it all covered. Because there's part of you that goes, what, you think I can't cope? And then there's part of you that goes, can you not see all the stuff that I'm doing and you're still not helping me? Um, and we go into this cycle. And, I mean, there'll be many women, possibly men, that are listening to and going, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. oh, yes, I, I get that. Or, oh, yes, my wife's done that. Because we've just bought into the fact that we can do it all. We shouldn't have to. And it's okay to say, do you know what? I don't want to. And accept help because that is one thing that we are so bad at. Yeah. It, it is a gift to the other person that is giving to say yes when they offer help. But we view it as, well, do they think that we can't cope? 
Do they think that we're no good? Do they think that I'm out of control and I can't do everything? I know when I give, I don't give because I think, oh my gosh, you know, they're, they're, they're rubbish. They can't do this. I give because I can see that they have a need and I want to help with that need. So I think just being able to understand how we can receive is really, really important. Yeah. And I think with with therapists as well, they it's, it's interesting with therapists because, you know, they give so much helping other people, but they forget to ask for help themselves or take time to have treatments themselves. They think, well, if, if, I, if I'm asking someone else for help, then that person's going to think that I'm not a good therapist because I'm, I'm not doing. And it's like, actually, you, you do need to take time out, you know, with, with other therapists, um, you know, be for you. Yeah. And it's really interesting that you should say that because, um, you know, I'm, I'm human. I still put my hands up and say, do you know what? I've, I've screwed up. Um, one of my lovely friends, Nicholas Sproson, she does tuning fork healing. And recently she said to me, when was the last time that you kind of had all your chakras and everything readjusted? And I said, well, I, I, I don't know. And when I sat and thought about it, it was like, got to be a good 14 years, good 14 years. And she was just like, oh my gosh, let's get you on the table. Let's do this now. And I walked out of there feeling like 10 foot tall because I cleared it all away. I topped up my energy bucket, you know, and I felt good. And we need other, other people. We need other therapists. You know, I work with the mind, but who do I go to to offload? You know, so I have various individuals, you know, I like the environment. So I work with the lovely Sarah Stone, who's creative feng shui. I have different people that I go to and it doesn't mean that I can't cope. It doesn't mean that I'm no good. I know how to give to myself. I know how to give myself what it is that I need, even if it takes me 14 years to realize it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a long time not to uh, have you. Have you uh, Jack was in balance. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I like guided meditations. I can put me track was in balance. But I think it's my voice sometimes is a little bit weird, but hey, there you go. But it's good. You listening to your own. I def I have meditations that I make for my clients and I go, oh yeah, I need that for me at the moment. Listen to some switch method stuff and you know, being able to change emotional state. We all need support. And the higher you go up in your in 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 your business if you're a therapist so if you're a therapist that's on stage or if you're a therapist who's you know has a mass following there's often that feeling that I can't be seen to reach out for help because what will people think well actually if if people really understand you know what this spiritual life is all about they will be really happy that you are constantly working on your own stuff because we are only as good working with other people as we are working with ourselves because we have to offload, we have to release, we have to work through the ups and downs of life that we go through. So, yeah, I, I get it. I really get it. Yeah, that, that's that's brilliant. So, as you know, um, I do um, I recall angel card readings and guided meditations. So each week, I like to ask my guests whether they would like me to pull an oracle card for them or do a mini guided meditation, not just for them but for everyone watching. So, Casia, you get to choose oracle card or guided meditation. Do you know what? It's been a while since I've had an oracle card. Can I have an oracle card? You can have an oracle card. Yeah. We like oracle cards. We do. We do. Yes, I, I love, I love, I love working with cards because it's so amazing that quite often the card that comes out is actually confirmation about what you're doing or what you already know um, at, the, at the time. Because when I work with the cards, I work. Um, for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time mm. which seems a bit contradictory that I work everything in the present as I do past life regression <laughs> but with the past life regression it's to clear the past so that you are in the present in the here and now and when you go into the future you know what your future is so you're not worried so you can be again clearly in in the present exactly. so I like I like everything to be um in in the present so let's give the cards a quick cleanse and a bless so 
What does Kasia and everyone who's watching this need to know for their high school this moment in time? What is, well, okay, that one's decided to come out. <laughs> With great force, I should imagine. It, it did, it kind of like jumped out, which is kind of like ties in with what we're talking about. Ascending the mountain, keep going forward. Oh, beautiful. Yes. And absolutely beautiful. And what a gorgeous card. I know, it's absolutely lovely um, with the mountains and moving forward. But it's moving forward on, on a path, um, you know, and the path is really clear. It's not sort of like you're having to try and get over obstacles or stuff like that. It's kind of like saying, okay, keep going, keep going forward with what you're doing. And that you know the the path is there for you um once you're on it and you're just going with the flow then then you will ascend that mountain and and achieve what you're supposed to be achieving mm -hmm. to be your best possible self in in this life so it's a beautiful card so yeah keep moving forward with what you're with what you're doing um, oh, I'm so excited. It's exactly, so excited. absolutely perfect. And of course, everyone watching, exactly, it's the same for you as well. You know, keep going, going forward, you know, and, you know, with, with the words of wisdom that um, Kasia has given you, you know, you've, you've got an idea now of, of, of watching your cycles to help you move um, forward. So, Kasia, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers that can, that can help us at this time? I think really probably following on from the card is that we often think that where we are right here right now is where we're meant to be and it's not this is a transitional period you know for some of your your watchers they might be reaching a crossroads of their life and think you know how are things going to change I think being in alignment and following your different energy spaces will help you make decisions a lot easier, quicker, and more supportive and in alignment with who you are and what you're meant to be doing. So I would just say where you are right now is not where the story ends, it's just where it begins. And, you know, just, just know that. Um, and having that knowledge gives you that confidence to really go after what it is that you truly desire. Absolutely perfect. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this and found it insightful. And the words of wisdom Kazia has given you will help you further mm -hmm. on your journey. So Kazia, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? So probably the easiest is kazialuckett.com. So K-E-Z-I-A Luckett, L-U-C-K-E-T-T.com. Um, on there will be a link to a whole page about the energy code um, courses, journals cards all of those wonderful things so that people can start to understand it and also the quiz so they can understand what energy space they're actually in because understanding it makes it so much easier to know how to navigate it so that's probably the easiest or they can come and find me on facebook or instagram I'm exactly the same name yeah and what i'll do is i'll post all the links in the comments so that people can just click on click on the the individual links um with, without having to go and search, search through them for you <laughs> thank you oh uh, you're welcome so if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help in finding your destiny and getting clear on your path then i would love to be that guide for you please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call where we can have a conversation and find out what you need where you're going and how i can help you um, on your journey to take charge of your destiny and of course, the Angel Wings membership community um, is now open where you get a chance to um, work with Ascended Masters, Archangels, Gods, Goddesses, Oracle Cards and other members um, to spread your wings and soar. So check out my website um, for more details and the link. And if you feel guided to, then you can sign up to my weekly newsletter which um, and get a free guided relaxation meditation to help you de-stress. And there are a couple of other free gifts on there to help with your journey. And I've just created a new Facebook page for Glastonbury, for my retreats down in Glastonbury, because um, I'm looking at running a lot more next year. So please do check that out. 
Um, so thank you everyone for watching and I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, you, you scoop, YouTube, <laughs> favorite words there, um, then, you're, then please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of any uh, future shows, especially when they go live. So thank you, Kazia, for being on the show. It's been absolutely wonderful thank chatting you. to you. And people do take that quiz. See where you are um, at the moment on your cycle. And I look forward to seeing you all again, same time, same place next week. Bye. Thank you.